I did a video on using an Arduino Uno as a multimeter, and it was a pretty good circuit, I think, but it had a lot of moving parts and it had one issue. I was hoping somebody in the comments, one of my viewers, would figure out what was going on, but no such luck. But I've come up with a simpler circuit. It's not as good, but like I've said multiple times, you're not always trying to have the best circuit. You're trying to have the best circuit that suits your needs and no more, because why have extra parts? So if you don't need something to be as accurate as accurate and precise as the Arduino can possibly be, if you're willing to drop a couple bits out of 10, plenty of bits, then there's a much simpler way to do it. Let me show you. In the previous design, I was using voltage doublers to increase the voltage available to the op amp so they could work with a bigger signal and have the headroom they need. Whether you have rail-to-rail -rail op amps or not, you still don't want to be operating right at the rails. But if we shrink the signal, that's bad because we introduce noise, but if we don't shrink it too much, it shouldn't be bad enough to worry about. Especially if we only need a resolution down to a tenth of a volt or a twentieth of a volt. We can drop a lot of bits and still have that. So the idea is shrink the signal into the headroom that the op amps are going to have with the default 5 volt rails. So you have your signal incoming, which can be of any magnitude whatsoever. You just decide what the maximum is, plus or minus x. And it has to be symmetrical, so if it can go to, you know, plus 7 volts and minus 10 volts, just say plus 10, minus 10. We're going to take this signal and put it through a voltage divider to bring it down, to, to basically re reduce gain to the point that it's going to fit in plus or minus 2.5 volts. I've chosen that as a nice comfortable range that's still big enough. I could probably have done 3, but 2.5 is fine. Then I'll do the standard unity gain buffer of this signal to make sure that this voltage divider isn't interacting with any other resistors I have in the rest of the circuit. So now the signal is voltage divided and buffered to fit inside the plus and minus 2.5 volt range that the op amps are going to work with. So we don't do any voltage doubling. I'm just going to do a single negative stage. So over over here I have a PWM pin of the Arduino generating a square wave, and I'm not going to buffer it, push, pull, or anything. I'm just going to straight put this pin into the negative rail because I'm driving no loads throughout this entire thing. The op amps are going to draw almost no current. I'm using large resistors for the voltage dividers, so this pin of the microcontroller is absolutely able to draw all the current, or drive all the current I need. So this is the same voltage reverser circuit I was using before, just without all the buffering. And I am using ceramic capacitors this time because, again, the load I'm driving is going to be teeny, teeny, tiny. So, you know, there's the warm-up period of uh, microseconds, I guess, where it's not going to be stable, but as soon as these capacitors fill up at all, subsequently they're never going to drain because I'm not going to be drawing much per half wave of the square wave of the PWM. So smaller ceramic capacitors will work just fine, and I don't have to worry about electrolytics because I don't like using electrolytics. They're a pain in the butt. Go watch this video if you don't know how this works. I've done a video on the, the voltage reverser, but the PWM charges and discharges this capacitor, goes through here, and the cycle reverses to this capacitor, so you end up driving a negative load. So it goes from ground through this point, which becomes the negative rail. And you lose a diode drop, so we end up with, you know, plus 5 and minus 4.5 or so. But with that, we have a negative rail. And now the design is exactly the same as last time, but simpler. So the voltage divided and buffered signal will go into the inverting input of a comparator, and the non-inverting gets ground. So this is going to put out high when the signal is less than zero, and a low when the signal is greater than zero. And this acts as a sign bit in a binary number. So high is going to be negative, and low is going to be positive. And this, of course, is given the positive Arduino rail and the negative rail that we created. Now, because we're driving this from the Arduino power, we don't have to worry about the positive voltage. It's going to be perfectly within the Arduino spec. But the negative is not, because the Arduino doesn't want to take a voltage below zero. So the obvious thing to get rid of a negative voltage is a diode, but this is going to leave it floating when there's a negative voltage, so we have a pull-down resistor. So there's your sign bit that you plug into your microcontroller. When the op-amp is putting out negative, it's going 
to get the zero rail. When the op amp is putting out positive, it's going to get the positive of the op amp minus the diode drop here. Now, for me, that's fine. My Arduino reads it just fine. I think that the Arduino and the Atmega 328P or whatever it is that it uses seem to be extremely newbie friendly, and they will take voltages that you would not expect would be fine. I know that I was wrong about what CMOS accepts, but it's only getting like 3.2 volts, and it's still accepting it, and that's definitely well within the range of indeterminants, indetermination for even CMOS voltages, but it takes it just fine. But if yours doesn't, then instead of a diode and a resistor, you use an NPN BJT and two resistors, standard inverter. So you've got the output to a base resistor into the base, and then the emitter goes to ground, and then you've got a resistor on the top. It's a NOT gate. It's the same as a NOT gate. So if the BJT is closed, then it's going to get high through the pull-up resistor, and if the BJT is open, then it's going to get ground to the emitter. And then if you want to maintain, because that's an inverter, so if you want to maintain the sense of this, then just flip the inputs, because the inverter is going to flip it again. But this works for me, so that's what I've done. So then we take the signal and put it to a standard, as in I've done a video on it, precision rectifier. So here's the precision rectifier, and you can refer to that video for how this is designed. But when the signal is positive, it is unity gain non-inverting amplified here through this diode. And when it the signal is negative, then it is unity gain amplified through this inverting amplifier to flip it to positive. The diodes make sure only one is active at a time. And this is a pull-down resistor because you will have cases where neither of these are active and it's around zero, right around zero-ish. You could have it flipping back and forth. You could have it, you know, both trying to be active at the same time and competing. And the pull-down resistor is going to override that. And then anything that's any distance from zero is going to override the pull-down resistor. So technically, you don't need this, but that's in a simulator. In the real world, you want this pull-down resistor because zero is a nasty place and you don't want to be near it. So now you have a zero to 2.5 volt signal that you put into an analog pin, and there's your sign bit, and you read it, and in software, you do the following. So what you want to do is your ADC is 10 bits, but we're only using half the range. Instead of 0 to 5 volts, we're using 0 to 2.5. So instead of going from 0 to 1023, you're going to get 0 to 511. So you're going to take your ADC read, and you're going to multiply it by 2.0. That brings it up to the 1024 range you would expect. You add 0 0.5 to put it in the mid-range for the ADC slot it's in. Refer to my video on the Arduino input and output pins for an explanation of how the analog read works and why it's in the middle. And then you divide by 1024.0, multiply by your original voltage. So the ADC read is a number from 0 to 511, times 2 brings it up to 0 to 1023. We add 0.5 to scooch it into the middle of one of the numbers. Then we get a ratio from 0 to 1. And then we multiply by the original voltage. So that we have, instead of 0 to 1, we have, if it was 5 volts, it's 0 to 5. 15 volts, it's 0 to 15. So this gives you the actual magnitude of the measured voltage. Then, if sine bit multiply by negative 1. The way I do this is I have a variable that says if the sine bit is 1, if it's high, then put a negative 1. If the sine bit is low, just put a positive 1, and then I just multiply that in here, and that sets the sign. So then you have a floating point number, which is your voltage to within the measurement. One thing you could do to improve this is to set the reference voltage of the ADC to 2.5. What will happen then is the number will actually be from 0 to 1023 because it'll use the whole range. And all you do then is you remove this times 2.0. I did not bother to do that because I'm just demonstrating. But if you are really doing this, then you would, you know, you could use a voltage divider and a buffer. You've already got op amps. Add one more. Voltage divide 5 volts to 2.5 volts. Buffer it and stick it into the ADC. Put a cap on it. This is my previous video, in fact, or, or whatever order these videos comes out. I just did one recently on setting the reference voltage. If you do it this way instead, it's just less precise, but it works just fine. And now to show you, so you you know I'm not lying about it. The power supply and this part over here is just how I'm generating the signal. Don't worry about it. I didn't feel like using this. So here I've got the incoming signal, which is going to be plus and minus 5 volts. So I voltage divide it down to plus and minus 2.5 volts and buffer it to an op amp. Then 
The same op amp is going to set the sine bit, and I've got the diode and resistor in there, and I've got that going into one of the Arduino's digital pins. Then I've got the precision rectifier here, and that's going into one of the Arduino's analog pins. And these are the cheap op amps that can only get to like 3 point some volts from a 5 volt rail, so that's why I chose 2.5 volts. I could probably choose 3, but 2.5 is fine, and it's easier because it's half of what my signal was. And so... It's putting a signal from 0 to 2.5 volts into the analog pin, and the digital pin, it's giving about 0 for low and about 3.2 volts for high, which the Arduino apparently can read just fine. This multimeter is measuring the signal voltage before the voltage divider, and then this is the software output through serial after I read the analog signal, multiply by 2 to get it into the full range, because I did not bother to set the analog reference, so it's still using the default 5 volts. Analog read times 2 plus 0.5, all of that divided by 1024, and then times 5, 0, to get 5 volts. And then I make it negative if the sign bit is high. Right now, it's right about 0 and right about 0. And as I change the voltage to positive, you can see the multimeter changing and the reading changing, and you can see there is some wiggle. There's definitely some wiggle because of the reduced precision and such, but it's wiggling on the tenth of a volt, decivolts. So, you know, obviously the multimeter is far more accurate than that is, but do you need decivolt accuracy? If you do, don't do this. If you don't, well, here you go. It's just a couple diodes, some resistors, and two op-amp chips, or one if you have a quad op-amp chip. So it's a nice easy circuit. Oh, and then the reverser, so a couple of capacitors. But I can turn it all the way up to five, and it's reading five, roughly. There you go, it works. And then negative, there we go, see? So the precision rectifier is flipping at the positive, so it's reading it as if it were positive, but then it's multiplying the sine bit, so there's negative five volts. And there you go. An easier way to do an Arduino Uno as a multimeter, or just to read any sort of sensor or input or anything that can also be negative. So at the end of the day, it's all about using the right tool for the right job. Multiple different circuits for multiple different options for multiple different input and output requirements. You don't need to set the reference voltage for more accuracy if that's enough accuracy. Easy enough. So with that, I'll be seeing you.